man, you come straight out of a cunt. My click stay in jail like Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. <laughs> Nigga, when he came in, oh yeah, because they we never, never talk about that type of yo. They don't we, never talk about Tim when, Allen and his and his drug run, Brian, dog. Man, yeah, yeah, that's wow. He's King bro. out here. <laughs> yo, that just got to be one of the headlines in the mockumentary. Buzz right. Lightyear slangs dope. <laughs> it's like because I, yeah. I, I, I want I want to do mockumentary. I want to have like fake actors that be like, yo, no, hey. I mean, I know y'all think he's Buzz, but really, but, reality, was he, but he was Buzz. <laughs> you, got, buzz. you got you got to have somebody do the Charlie Wilson. Be like, all right, so mm-hmm. people, it, it was two thousand and two. <laughs> right, we fre- refresh off a of Galaxy Quest, right? And you know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm in my hotel room, and so I come downstairs, and there's Tim. So you know, I see Tim and everything like that, and you know, I'm talking with him and stuff and everything. And he say, "Hey, you know, why don't you come take a ride with me?" So I'm like, "All right, you know, you, you, know, you ride with Tim Allen. You know, that's Mr. Home Improvement." Tim so you know, we, yeah, Tim the Tool Man Taylor. Taylor, we so said, "No, we ride." You, you know why they call him the Tool Man? I didn't know why until that <laughs> night. Why I found <laughs> out why night. he was the Tool Man. You know, now he, <laughs> take, he takes me to this club. Takes me to Club Seventy Six, right? Club seventy six is a, it's a uh, it's a, it's a lovely club down there at SF man. I, I didn't ran into my boy ATO. ATO got these two uh, Colombian women that are at the time you can call them midgets. Y'all can't call them midgets no more, but at the time <laughs> they were called midgets. And so ATO got these two midgets on his shoulders, and he just walking around with them in the club. And then he came, he came up to say hey to me. You know he knew who Tim Allen was, and so we having drinks, we having a good time. Then all of a sudden, we had the VIP area, and Tim just pulls out this whole brick of cocaine and just slams it on the table. <laughs> <laughs> and so everybody's shocked. He, ATO even takes the two midgets off of his shoulders and just is just kind of looking. Cuts it open, <laughs> puts a little line down. <laughs> This nigga says to infinity and beyond and just <laughs> and I'm like yo so but here's the crazy part like we thinking he's just the party at the end of the night he's like look if anybody need this I got it you come talk to me and What's I'm up? like yo Tim Allen like bro like come to find out he the biggest supplier uh, of South America right now Mm-mm-mm-mm. You know, it's funny. I always thought his name later on in life. I just felt like maybe Disney was like taking a shot at him when they hired him because we're going to name you Buzz Lightyear. Buzzed drugs. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Lightyear. (laughs) Like, really thinking about. Hey, you know what? Somebody could have really have bought coke from him that made Buzz Lightyear. Be like, you know what? Somebody, nigga, somebody, <laughs> that cast, somebody that casted him probably bought some fucking shit off of him. Bro, imagine being like his op. Like, you know what I'm saying? His rival mm-hmm. drug dealer. And then all of a sudden you see that he famous. You like, what the? Bro? Ima- <laughs> right. Ima- imagine what being a cop. Doing? Imagine being an op with the feds and he tell you, I have seen him sell over to 300 celebrities uh, <laughs> cocaine. Some of these people include, and then you just show start showing pictures. <laughs> the, hey, the little the little bully, the bully that the little bad kid in the first uh, sub. <laughs> <laughs> the entire the entire cast from the Sandlot. <laughs> oh just Lord. damn! Oh, no, like, like just bro, Tim Allen, bro, man, that's the most. That, I I just want more from that. I'm like, yeah, so. That's, That's why we're yeah. yeah. yeah, into I run into uh I forget her the actress's name, man. Uh Heidi from uh I run into her a lot here, in San Diego, man. And she wears her belt too, man. It's pretty like every now and again she'll wear the belt. Oh, the oh, tool yeah. belt? Yeah, yeah. Um oh, I forget her, her name or her, her uh, character's name was Heidi on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It she, was yeah, yeah, she, she, yeah. yeah. I can't yeah, remember she, her name either, but yeah, I know yeah. that. That's good. Yeah, that is dope. She's nice. Everyone I saw, I said, you know who you remind me of? And she was like, who? And I was like, um, uh, the, the character Heidi from uh, uh, Home Improvement. And she's like, oh, that's me. And I'm like, oh, what? Word? <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. yeah, I think my homeboys ran into her, too. And they say, like, she's just the, the sweetest person. Like, you'll ever nah, be like, she's dope. Yeah, like, she'll, she'll, she'll say it. She'll even do, like, the, the line that she normally mm-hmm. does. 
like yeah. that. Like she, she. That's one of the ones that like. Uh, uh, Debbie Gunning. That was her name. Yeah. Debbie Gunning. Yeah. Debbie yeah. Gunning. yeah. She's uh, yeah. She's always like a super nice person. That's one of the ones that's like not jaded by the character she played. Like she mm-hmm. embraces, I, I love embraces seeing, it. Yeah, I love yeah. when I can see like celebrities yeah. embrace their character mm-hmm. and not you know and I, and I get sometimes it can be taxed and it can be a little tolling on them depending on what they played and stuff but i like it when it's just like they'll play into it like you know um rest in peace like the green ranger but it was like i love that he played into it like when i met right. him at the apple store i was like i just want you to know uh from all of us we would like to thank you for your service and saving the planet from rita zed <laughs> and the fact that you can blow a flute and a dragon comes out of the ocean <laughs> <laughs> Why you got a helmet on? He was like, oh, "Hey, bro. it is my pleasure." I was like, "Bro, I love, I, I love when people keep saying their characters because, like, I remember like when I when I got a chance to chop it up with Gary Anthony Williams, right? I'm just like, I I'm like, all right, I'm not gonna ask him to do Uncle Ruckus because you know Uncle Ruckus kind of a wild character, but he, I was like, you know what I'm saying? But he immediately went in it and even. Through Geek Set in it. He's like, you know what I'm saying? He did the voice like, who is Geek Set? A whole bunch of hippity and hoppity niggas talking about anime. He's like, y'all niggas don't even know bunnies. And I'm just like, dog, this is the greatest moment ever. <laughs> like, yeah, it came out of nowhere. Because yeah. here's the thing you got to remember, too. He he played Smart Brother. So that's why it don't surprise me he'll do that voice whenever yeah. he feels like it. I'm like, he was Smart Brother and Undercover Brother. I, n- yeah. I know you down. Yeah. That's I know crazy, you down. Man. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Straight Out of a Comic Book. I am your host, Will Farrow. Uh, and today, of course, you know I got the fellows with me, Young Deuces, ATO Worldwide. And we're going to be joined by Brandon Brody in just a minute. Um, you know, so on today's episode, normally we'll do a hot topic or you normally see some fandom fiction. Uh, we're kind of changing it up a little bit today, man. I wanted to uh, really pick y'all brains, man. You know, ATO being, you know, a... a a up and coming ranger that I have no doubt is gonna be in these TV shows and stuff, Can't being wait. the Inferno Ranger and stuff. And Deuce is just vast knowledge of comics, superheroes, and just the 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 empire that you're building behind the blurred term. Man, I want I wanted to really like pick y'all brains about when it comes to superheroes and villains and stuff. So, you know, I always I've watched a lot of videos, I've seen a lot of videos where people like discuss these, have like the voiceovers and stuff, but I've never seen it from our people. You know what I'm yes. saying? Our people talking about these stuff. And so I really want to start picking y'all brain about it. So um, first, I, I want to start off with heroes. And so as we kind of, you know, I'm going to give uh, Brody a little bit of time to hop in. I want to know, can y'all give me your top three heroes, top three superheroes? It could be from anywhere. And I'll give y'all a little time. If you if you want to just start off with the first one, that's fine. I'll even do mine first. One of my first, uh, one of my favorite, of course, uh, like everybody, is Spider-Man. That's a solid choice. Um, one of mine is going to be Batman. And I know that's going to be a polarizing topic, but there's a <clears> reason <throat> why. And what's hilarious okay. is uh, I think I think that's tomorrow. Tomorrow when we do one of the episodes that we're going to do, I also mm. got another reason that's going to be hilarious about Batman. But yeah, Batman is definitely one of my top ones. Um, oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you. Oh, I was. Just, I, 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 yeah, oh, I was. Yeah. I was going to say. I was going to pass it on to you. I was going to say you might as oh, well okay. do your first, your top one. So, it's it's Batman. Um, and I'm gonna. <laughs> I, I'll explain why. So, it's really more so Bruce Wayne than anything. Um, okay. I've loved the the whole Batman situation since I was a little boy. Since man, I forgot my first comic book. I think I was like six or something like that. Right. I remember the '89 Batman comic. The '89 Batman. Uh, ad came out when I was little and stuff, and it was dope, right? But we knew Batman was Batman, whatever. But you didn't get to see the true Batman until Bruce Tim, Paul Dini, Dwayne McDuffie got a hold of him. Yeah, in the and, they, and they showcased the Batman animated series. God bless the dead, Kevin Conroy, the greatest Batman voice of all times, right? Yes, yes sir. Now I became the knight. I am the knight. I am Batman. Like his voice was amazing, right? Yeah. Now, he was more theatrical than anything, right? So moving forward, moving from the animated series onto the this, this, this soft reboot, Justice League, and all of that stuff, you really got to see what Bruce Wayne and Batman was really about versus an image, a commercial image of a dude in a bat suit yeah. in films and other forms of media. Then we got the animated films that showcase who Bruce Wayne and Batman were. 
And that from those moments right there, that's what made me realize that Batman is my favorite. He'll trump anybody. I mean, I'm I'm neck and neck with him and Superman because I love them both. But it's like Bruce because he's he's a normal dude, no powers, a brilliant, a genius, rich, all that, whatever, whatever. But he's also he wears a suit, strikes he, he strikes fear into the heart of criminals who are super superstitious and cowardly. Like that's yeah. dope, bro. Like he was just he's just he's just a great character. But all these different other renditions of him, they don't do him any justice. No disrespect to any of the films. The best rendition of him on live action other than Michael Keaton, because he's prime, in my opinion, is probably Ben Affleck as Bruce Wayne. Man, talk about it. Yeah, talk about it. As Bruce Wayne. So I want to add to ATL because everything that he said was what I was going to say as well about why I chose Batman as my favorite. But... As I got older, and so since we're talking about, you know, the, you know, saying the, the psyche of heroes, right? This is something that I feel like a lot of people skip over and didn't think about. All right. Bruce, as a kid, saw his parents get slain by the underbelly of Gotham, right? Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, dudes. Say, save that part because we're about to jump into that. And I think what you're about to say is going to tie into the reason why we talk about their psychology. So okay. I just, I, yeah, because I want you to say that. Because the reason why I'm asking y'all is because those are the ones that we will depict in this episode. That okay, because yeah, I got to break psychology. Got, yeah, I and, I saw, really I got, and I see you got a really good one. So we will start off with Batman, though, since two of yeah. you have Batman. We'll start off with him first. Uh, but I, I wanted to uh, give a sec just, you know, to introduce Brandon Brody. Just got to get him caught up. Brody! Um, glad to have you on here. What up? What up? Yeah, so we are talking about today the psychology of superheroes and we're also going to be talking about the evolution of villains and so as i said you like uh, along with deuce and ato i think you're another person who i love your perception of how you view things and so i think especially how familiar you are with this topic when it comes to superheroes and villains i really want to get your perspective too on this so one thing we had just started off with um us talking about three of our favorite heroes. So I've picked, my first pick was Spider-Man. Both of their picks were Batman. And so we did want to add your take to it. What is your, what is one of your favorite superheroes? Um, I mean, Spider-Man is for sure there, but I also like, I really love Deadpool, man. Um, I know he's more of an anti-hero, but it's like Deadpool's, uh, his plight is just so, I mean, it's, I mean, it's like anybody else. It's like, it's kind of a, it's kind of a Darth Vader-ish, you know, it's, it's love essentially, you know? Yeah. But then, but then it's also the fact that he's, it's like, like they, I mean, they gave him, it's cancer. You know what I'm saying? Like that's, that's like a really bold choice for, for any to, to, to make for a, for, for somebody you have to go through. And I think that like, it's, it's kind of, he's overcoming that, but then overcoming his own ego in a sense, you know, yeah. um, he, he has, and, and then there's also the, like, we're talking the psyche, like, him breaking the fourth wall is kind of like it, it's like is he going crazy is it like is it you know it's like we we laugh at it as viewers of the audience you know but it's like he's not doing that because he's literally talking to us you know i think it's like he's literally like kind of like having like a, a, a um what is it um, like a, like a personality disorder. Yeah, because like okay. I said, you, you yeah. got to think. Yeah, when you think about it, you're like, okay, yeah, it's cool. He's talking to us, right? But then you look at it from his perspective and the other people in his world, they're like, who in the fuck are you talking to, bro? Exactly. Like, <laughs> you know, um, yep. just, just to add my other two, because I already know my other two, and I know we'll yeah. get through it. But <clears throat> my, my other two is going, it is uh, Static Shock um, and Silver Surfer. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then ATL for you. What are your other two? A hey, can uh, Power Rangers uh included? Yeah, yeah. Bro, he, he, heroes in any span. Oh, okay, sweet. So uh obviously I said Bruce. Um, this is real tough. It's really difficult for me, man. Um, I like Sonic a lot. Like the whole I die. Nah, it's it's I, I know, but Sonic is like man, Sonic. he's he's universal, bro. Like, um yeah, I've been on Sonic since the beginning. And I've gotten, you know, we have a six-year-old and then we got, I have my niece, like they're all into Sonic. Sonic is just a dope character and what he represents and, and everything, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Shit. And then like, I, I would say uh, probably like, uh, you know, Walter, man, um, you know, uh, you know, <clears throat> Zach, you know, the, the Black Ranger, but see the cool thing about just me saying that Walter himself is really that, like, 
dude is legit a real hero, bro. Like he'll he look out for people. He puts you in position. He 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 he, he helps you. Like he, it's it's dope, bro. Like and I and I and I never really know. I never know knew how. I never knew that I felt that way until I got to know him on a more personal, everyday type of type of level. And I'm like, yo, you really are that. So yeah. I would definitely say Bruce, Sonic, and 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 Zach. And I just I, I I differentiate each hero on purpose because I don't want to say Superman, Batman, yeah, and, right, because they're all similar. Those guys are similar. They're just going to represent different. True. Oh yeah. Fact no, of like, being, being heroes, no, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. No, I like y'all range. I like y'all yeah. range that we're going. Um, Brody, what about yourself? Two more. Uh, hero. <coughs> Another hero. Hey, yeah, just yeah, two more heroes. Two of your favorite heroes. Um, let's see. I'd say. Uh, Second to that would be it's gonna be someone from the Star Wars universe. I'm just trying to kind of like mm-hmm. right, so why why are you thinking because we can do more than one media, I want to change my last two. Is that cool? <laughs> yeah, because you did uh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't all comic books, I didn't know. Yeah, I thought we were talking comic books yeah, over here. But, but, but if we if we changing it, then my last two is actually going to be Vegeta and Seer Junda from the Star Wars Whoa. Jedi Fallen Waters uh um and Star Wars Survivor series. Okay. Yep. There Those are go. my two. There we go. Okay. Oh, you're just gonna take Vegeta away from me? Fight me, bro. <laughs> you didn't choose him. You didn't choose him. I, I, I wanted to, but I didn't want to because I was like, it's let me go some a different direction. Let me just say no one's gonna say Sonic. And no one's, I was, gonna, I, no one's actually, gonna mention the Power Ranger, bro. Like, no one's gonna do that. Actually, you Nate, that was gonna be mine. Sonic was gonna be one of mine. Oh, Sonic, I mean, it was definitely my it. turn in the first place. Deuce just jumped ahead and then ah. and then not only said he, 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 then he said two more characters. Like, you know what I mean? Like he he don't know what ATO was gonna say. He has no idea what I was gonna say. I even brought up Star Wars so I could have a, a run ahead starting. <laughs> I, I like how he play. jumped ahead. I mean, jumped play. ahead and threw his, Oh no, but I but I want to pick him. <laughs> I've changed my mind. No, wait, wait, no. A- to my to my defense, ATO set the president's president. Well, you know, he set the time. He set that we can do more than just comic books. So once he picked, I already had mine changed, and I put it in the private chat. Nobody saw. That's what it was. I'm looking, I did. I'm, look, I'm, I'm looking at it right now. What you mean? I, I put it in. The, no, I put it in the private chat that I want to change my last two when he was talking. Yeah, but you didn't, you, you didn't put it was going to be from the Star Wars universe until you jumped ahead of me until I said the word Star Wars. Well, That's what I was like, yo. What you gave I Star mean, when you were thinking like about Star Wars, he was going to say my favorite. Hey, look, bro, I'm, I'm all about that galactic Gucci, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot your copyright? You, for- <laughs> you forgot about the galactic Gucci? Bro, I don't even remember he said this shit. <laughs> Yeah, oh, bro, you gotta go. Yo, you gotta go rewatch what we did to Star Wars characters. Yo. When I tell you, you dropped <laughs> gems in that episode. You did, bro. bro. Yo, I, I like swear I black out sometimes, Will, because you tell me these things I said, and I'm like, oh no, please, what did I, bro? I'm telling you, bro, <laughs> like, yo, you gotta go watch. Like, I, I wasn't playing the last time when I say, like, yo, I be a little upset the fact that we shoot these on Zoom. Because some of the shit you say, I wish be shot in high definition so I can make clips that you could just have. Because it's just like, yo, the way you like the last, like we shot yesterday, he was sitting here. Dion decided to go, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is better than all the Star Wars. So we sitting here debating this shit. Idiot. And when I tell you, I, all of us are convinced Brody was taking notes on what he was about <laughs> to say idiot. and the key points. This man had one pad that said, fuck y'all niggas. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it was played so perfectly. Was. So perfectly. Yeah, because y'all called it out and said, oh, he's taking notes over there. Yeah, I was like, yeah, you're damn right. I was just I was just going right back over the F and stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good reveal. But I want to say, if I'm going to, I mean, you know what? I mean, it's a newer <laughs> case. Oh, fuck, man. Ah, uh, fuck it. Let me just let me just let me just be bold. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Din Djarin, man. Ooh, solid, solid. Like the Mandalorian has really opened my eyes to again to what Star Wars can represent. Yep. And I think that again, I mean, I'm clearly a person that likes anti heroes because I think they have a better arc. 
you know, the hero kind of knows it's their duty they, or, you know, we, we assume it's their duty as an audience. When you get the anti-hero, it's like this person really has no reason to to kind of to go in this direction. Like, why they don't need to go save the world. You know, that's not their plight. They're not they're they're a person that's like they're changed by some kind of circumstance that they see them going in that direction makes them a better person and makes the world value them more. So in, in the Mandalorian's case, I mean, this dude is a cantankerous, you know, bounty hunter that really has no loyalties to anybody. Yeah. And upon meeting Grogu, builds, develops this relationship that not only makes him see that he does have a more sensitive side to himself, but it's it's he's he can be open to having new relationships because of course he has abandonment issues because of his parents. You know he doesn't he, he he's only really forged a relationship with other Mandalorians. You know because he's the, that, those are the only people that he respects in the universe. You know or trusts. But here he is now. Grogu saved his life on numerous occasions. He's like wow, I can open myself up to the point that when he wanted IG Eleven. <laughs> um you know repurposed and rebuilt and everything it just it, like and and because he said he doesn't want to deal with the droid ever it really shows like his his growth and his openness for um like his, his just his evolution as a character so i really think uh yeah din jarm i can i guess i can double down with that okay the mandalorian and i think you had what one more after that and my last one um i think i'll say uh kick ass Ooh, solid. Nice, nice. Solid. Yeah, kick ass. It's, it's, he's, again, it's, 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 I mean, he's not the anti hero, but he's, he's the nerdy kind of just, you know, regular guy, essentially. Yeah. He's the regular guy that, that is in this world of other people that also, you know, believe in the, the superhero world and, and kind of go with it. But I think that kick ass is just, it's just such a, it's just, I don't know. I think I like the realism of it. So it's hard to say. I mean, the character, I don't necessarily identify with him as much, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, and I think all three of them, I don't, I don't, I mean, maybe, maybe the Mandalorian I can identify with a little bit more, but kick ass, uh, I think kick ass is just kind of like, I, I just like that, that depiction of, realism in the hero oh, yeah. world yeah, you know that, you, only, that, you only get that really in like the brothers or umbrella academy the brothers you mean the boys i mean the boys not the brothers <laughs> but, hey, but no 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 but look but look though. yeah mark Wahlberg and then you know. but look but look how in tune look how in tune we are because deuce has already knew what he meant right yeah oh that, yeah that, that, no that but that's look we knew what you meant when you said that we the brothers oh you know yeah. the boys the boys ah, yeah. tomato, ah, tomato, the boys. tomato same shit right yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm that's yeah. hard. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I already said, like, my second one was Sonic, and my third one is gonna be Kratos. Can you hey, can you pick Mario instead of Sonic? Because you kind of biting, bro. I feel some type of way. I have the original Sega Genesis right here. So Me too. do you have that? I sure do, sir. Do you have the Sonic and Knuckle Pack right now? I have everything. Damn, one, two, they, well, they, well, one, not, two, three, three, and knuckles. As a matter of fact, I have the original cartridge that has Sonic three and knuckles in one game. Knuckles oh, that's the fire! Game. That's the fire! That's the heat right there mm-hmm. with the Persia so, with the Persia level that was taken out of Sonic two. So my Persian third pick is my third Persia, pick is yeah. Mario. <laughs> my third <laughs> is Mario. <laughs> hold on, hold on, stop! What, what, what are you talking about? What Persian so, so level? In, Per in, in Sonic the Hedgehog 2, if you go through the sound, if you go to the uh sound check when you do the or sound test when you put the codes in, there's a there's a sound a sound in there that says Persia. It's a level that was taken out of Sonic 2, the original, and they added it on the Sonic 3 and Knuckles one cartridge as a as is, a bonus stage. Is that what it's called? It's called Persia, yeah. And they use the same oh. music from Se- the Secret of Mana. It's the same, it's the same music from Secret of Mana. I knew about the secret stage. I just never yeah. knew what it was. So it's, yeah. Wait, it's not a bonus stage on Sonic Three and Knuckles. It's, it's no, no. A- it's, it's it's just an it's an uh, it's only it's an addition on the Japanese cartridge of Sonic Three and Knuckles called Persia. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. I was about to say because I beat the whole Sonic Three and Knuckles. Yeah, that's hypersonic, yeah. and I and I didn't see no Persia either. Yeah, you know? it's all, yeah, no, it's no. from it's from Sonic Two. 
And the only reason, yeah, and the only reason I knew about it is because my uncle was stationed in Japan, and when my cousin mm-hmm. came back, he had it. He had the actual Japanese version, but I never knew what that stage was called. I just knew. I just thought it was like a bonus stage because it was Japanese. Yeah. Funny was podcast. Yes. Yeah. So. So yeah, I'm selecting uh Mario for my third one. Um. So yeah. So I say yo. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just to be, hey, just to be annoying. Which Mario though? The Super Mario World Mario or mm. Modern Mario? Because you know, we, there, there's. It's a, I was just having this conversation with somebody about the prints. I go, they sell specific prints. I said that's 91, 92 Mario right there. What, what you mean by that, bro? Trust me, that's not the Mario that you think you like. Like it's a different Mario. Yeah, like, it's all like different. Yeah, short chubby Mario or, or oh. Mario. I'm going with Mario 64. Oh, 64 that's Mario. That's my favorite. That's my favorite. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. my favorite Mario. That's, that's my favorite right there. Okay. That's game game Mario. Okay. Like so that. so 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 then let's talk about it, man. Like so I I, I have read up on some things and one uh one was a book that they they have out that is called The uh Psychology of Superheroes, an unauthorized guide to um pretty much learning about the psychology of these pop culture like why these heroes are so popular to us and what does it take to really be a hero. And so right. When we start to kind of break it down, I think like Deuce, I definitely want to uh, go back to you because I want to start off with Batman because one of the things that they say in the psychology that most heroes are formed through some type of trauma that they experience, whether it be in childhood, whether it be in young adulthood or a, a full adulthood itself. And I think out of the people that we had named, of course, on this list, we have Batman, Superman, Deadpool, Vegeta. Uh, what's the one from Fallen Order? So I don't mess the name up. Sir Junda. It's C E R E. J U N D A. Yeah, I spelled it right. I just didn't know how to pronounce it. So, Sarah John, the uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, the Black Ranger, the Mandalorian, Kick Ass, Kratos, Mario. And so, I would say the one that has experienced the most trauma, I would say, I guess we could put number one. You know what? I want to say Batman, but now that I think about this list, I got to take a step back. Just as I'm saying, it may be Kratos. I ain't gonna hold you. They no, be Kratos. I think it's Vegeta. I think Vegeta got the Ooh, most fucked up. Uh, he, he, nah, nah, no, yeah, you, yeah, you know, yeah. you're right because he was taken from you know his family. He but, was put to work. He was a villain. Yeah. Then he became but, a hero. Then he had. But, to, then he had. Then he had to. He had to. Um. There's still a big but. To, <laughs> keep on going. Oh shit. Um. What's, Majin. What's, my, well, Bobby took advantage of him. Right, right. Uh, 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 what did the, the android beat his ass? Yeah, uh, yeah. Hold on, what? Hold, hold, what? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We, 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 we you got, you got to take it back to make it more traumatic. You, you, you skip some shit. Oh, you I really, did. Okay, okay. Let me see. It, it, first, first off. Okay, go ahead. He was enslaved to Frieza as a yep. child. Yep. Yes, he was. Not God, only that, this man was sent across the universe as a kid to conquer planets, and you could not leave until you conquered this planet. There's still then a big co- cut. Then come to find out mm-hmm. you are now marooned because your entire planet and race has been destroyed. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. And and that yeah. is that is that is some fucked up shit, but it's still not more fucked up than making you kill your family and then also their ashes is now instilled into your skin and you're walking around with the ashes of your dead wife and daughter on your body because oh, that, you killed them. Is that but why he chose white? that. Yes. Yeah, that's why he's white. Oh, yeah. That's why he, I didn't no, know that. No, he didn't choose yeah. to kill his family. He, cho- he chose no, to get power. You, he didn't know yeah. his family was on, in, that, in, that, uh, in that town. And, and like one of our heroes <laughs> on here, with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> So you did that. Like hey, Batman, stop, stop. Batman didn't ask to get to, to watch his parents get shot. Now, if we want to say he the reason why they went out that night, but okay, we can say that. I, 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 no, but here's this is why. So let, let me let me get into my my speech on why Batman is actually the greatest superhero ever for what he been through. Okay, yeah. because think about it this way. All right, Bruce in general, Bruce saw his mom and dad get murdered by the underbelly of Gotham, right? And now, they was rich. So, it was that it was already a class thing, but he was rich. He was born he was born into wealth and he saw his parents, right? When when his parents died, Bruce got adopted by his servant as a kid. And 
Alfred, as much we would, we try to give him the credit. Bruce was still a kid who was a billionaire who had wealth, who really didn't have to listen to Alfred because Alfred really was his servant. So the fact that he could have turned into this billionaire asshole because he had no parent, parent, uh, parental figure to really guide him, and he decided to fight crime as as a superhero. That is that 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 takes a whole lot because I can imagine being twelve and got all the money to my disposal, and the person that's supposed to that's supposed to be my parental figure is really my servant. Bro, I don't know if I'm gonna turn out the best nigga in the world. I'm, I'm I ain't gonna hold you. I, but but I'm, but even too though, to what you're saying, that's still not that bad. No, no, I'm not saying it's that bad. I'm saying though, I'm so I'm, I'm going to the turn to, to turn into a superhero with all that where you like he literally could have bounced, took that money and did whatever. He could have been, a, a, he could have just lived the billionaire playboy life for real because. Who was gonna tell? Who was gonna tell him no? I was like, yes, Alfred is the parent, parental figure, but like, bro, the first twelve years of my life, you've been waiting on me hand and foot. I don't really have to listen to you. I mean, but also too though, he didn't have to listen to him then, and he did. So I think too, that's also what helped develop that relationship a little. Yeah, bit yeah, better. yeah, yeah. It did. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying that it's like once you have no holds bars and all that money, that's a lot. That's a lot of temptation. And he didn't fall to that temptation. Yeah. But see, but that's why I say I don't think I could give him the greatest trauma of that. Like, yo, it is messed up to see like your parents shot in front of you. Oh, yeah. That's not the greatest trauma. It, 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 yeah. It's just like but but I see where the trauma can stem to do that. Yeah. But it's just like even from everybody else, like even for instance, like the Mandalorian, like I, if, if memory serves the correct, like uh, how did he lose his pay? How did he become an orphan, Brody? Um, it was the uh, it was the Empire. They were they they came on this planet and they were just they were um they were uh, just killing everyone. And you got to remember these are after the events of um um Return of the Jedi. So oh no no excuse me no no this was actually no he was uh this was not the events of Return of the Jedi. Um, this was kind of uh Empire, while the Empire right? was still reigning. Yeah, yeah, Empire, Empire was still raining around, around that okay. time. Yeah, so, so see, um, yeah. and that one, and to my memory, um, I think I think he had a sister. If I'm not, if I'm not she, mistaken, is she still alive? Is she still alive or did she pass? I don't think she's alive, but I, I just remember like the whole there was that whole like maybe I'm mixing Boba Fett's story, but I, I do remember I do remember that Din Djarin like like he was saved by somebody i believe that was mandalorian or something like that like, yeah i remember, I remember was, hiding in a hole like the first episode he was like hiding in a hole or something yeah 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 and so i just say it even to that like on those type of global scales because even like to your point do so like that turning you to a hero like just imagine like that now like a global thing like how you said like Din Djarin watching ships come from the sky yeah. and just start like raining down on you same thing like with vegeta like yo I don't have a home to go to. Not like Wayne Man. Wayne Manor is destroyed. The whole oh, planet man. is gone. No, if, if 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 I'm if I'm betting on the horse who got the worst trauma, I'm going Kratos, man. To me, because here's the thing: not only did that happen, he comes to find out Ares really did it on purpose because he said, "I needed to sever that tie, so I needed you to do that." And then, not only that. He trusted in other gods to kill Ares. Those gods portrayed him. So mm -hmm. then he trusted into the elemental gods. Those gods traded him. Then he trusted into the Greek gods. They betrayed him. The Norse gods, they betrayed him. It's like, bro, his whole whoa, whoa, life whoa, has North been betrayal back to back to back to back. Well, the Norse gods just came for that smoke. That's what that was. <laughs> <laughs> they found out who he was and was like, hey, yo, square up. I heard about you. Right. I heard about you. So, Swear up, man. So Kratos, if, I, yeah, if I if I'm going who has the worst, man, Kratos got all my support for the worst. So so my question next then is what in your opinion makes you what would make makes it to where that is your call to action? So I guess even to let if y'all had to experience something like that, and let's say you did have the means to do like or is your first thought of 
I need to start seeking justice for everybody. Like, what do you think makes that snap into someone's head to decide to take on the mantle of being a hero like these people that we, we've uh, listed? If it was organized, I believe. Like, because like you got to think, like, okay, if it was a, if it was, if it was a, a non-controlled situation, like, so like Batman with Joe Chill, like, I think I would have just been gunning for Joe Chill, you know, or Spider Man mm. with the dude that killed his, you know, Uncle Ben. Mm. I would have been going for that, right? But then with like Vegeta scenario where Frieza does wipe out the planet and everything, and then you come to find out that no, this wasn't random. This is Frieza's plan. How she <laughs> rolls. Then yeah, yeah now nah, now it's like oh wait, there's it's this control. No fuck that. Nobody else is going through this shit. I'm going after everybody. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. So I think like, if it's or if it seems organized or it seems like there's a bigger play at hand, then yeah, I, I'm definitely turning to justice because now I need to stop this and I need to stop everything like that. But what makes you? But what makes a what makes a hero want to take that on though? Because I even like how we said in the last episode, like to to Brody's point, like when we in the uh you know the previous Spider Man uh fan fiction episode, like Brody said. I don't want to answer that call. Like, I'd rather <laughs> just be like, I got these powers and I'm just going to use them at the club and stuff like that. And I'm going to do my own thing. Kind of even the same thing, like he said, with the Star Wars fan of fiction. It was like, yo, he was a whole ho out here in the galaxy. <laughs> and that was it. Like, it was just like, yo, I got the capability. I've been through shit. But my first thought was not to be like, yo, I need to be a savior. So it's just like, yo, like, why do that? Like, what, what, like, what? I, I guess, you know, and maybe I'm just kind of like beating a dead horse with it, but it's just like, I don't know what it would be in someone's brain to snap. Maybe there's no logic behind it, but to go like, that's your first thought. I'm finna be a hero. Ooh, you know what? Well, no, hold on. I, I don't want to talk too much. I, 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 but I, I got a point that I will, I'll make after somebody else go. Um, re relay the question one more time, Will, so I answer ac accurately. Um, basically, what what do you think goes on in a person's mind to make them now after after experiencing mm. trauma? <clears throat> I'm gonna be a hero, outside of just like the justice for yourself, like to go. Mm. I'm gonna be this person that saves everyone now. Well, I mean, if it's if for you know, if it's someone that did something to someone you love you know there's there's some kind of plight of revenge that you ultimately get you get uh bunched into heroism because other people also dislike this person but what you don't really what they don't really show is like somebody obviously somebody loves joker like you know the way the way it was depicted in um todd phillips version again he's still the villain but we're seeing it from her perspective where we kind of do feel the sympathy for him so you can understand how or what they'll show in the next one is probably how Harley Quinn falls in love and, and wants to help him. She sees him as helping him, you know? Yeah. Suicide Squad's able to achieve that through showing us the bad guys being the good guys. Mm -hmm. So, for them, I mean, but for them, it's, they just want to, they're, I mean, they're prisoners. They don't really have a, a choice. Yeah. Um, but what, it's like, you're saying, what would make you want to, to be a hero? Yeah, just like after um, experiences, something like that. Like, what was your, like, what is it like you would think go in somebody's mind? Like, again, because even to your point, it makes sense of seeking it for yourself. Like, I sought out justice. This dude has also done this to somebody else, so I'm going to capture this for myself. But then now it's like, okay, I got to stop these other people now. Oh, right. I got to stop this from happening to somebody else. And it's just like... <clears throat> but you see what? what you're saying? But you see what you're saying? Yeah. I, think it, I think it just happens. You don't. It's okay. not like 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 Kick Ass and stuff like they they went out to be heroes and things like that, right? Yeah, Kick Ass they, was trying to find crime, yeah, bro. They were they was looking for they <laughs> looking, they was, nah, they was looking for the smoke. He got his right? ass whooped first time. So, he got so, his ass whooped. Exactly. So like, if you are a, a true hero, a lot of the true heroes, it just it's one of those things that just happen. Like Deuces didn't want to didn't grow up and be like, hey man, I want to be a rapper. He probably just started rapping, writing, carrying on, and then he became an artist. And then being a vocal artist turns into VO, podcasting, journalism, a whole full-fledged entertainer. It's one of those things that just happens, and it goes okay. with tears. It's tears if te it's tears of your life. Like you can't be MC what the fuck your whole life, bro. It's yeah. not gonna you happen. You gotta find ways to use your that that gift that you have, that voice, 
find a different a different outlet where you can also house the original gift that didn't really pan out the way you wanted it to. And, and here we are today, mm -hmm. having more success, having right. more fun, being able to do more things. Like, and that's how heroes. I think that's how heroes are pretty much planned. Because I, I'm sorry, man. Sorry, Brand. No, <laughs> I, 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 wanna, I just want to. I want to. I want to double down on what you're saying. You know what I mean? Because I, I think about like my own self. I never really wanted to be a comedian per se. Mm -hmm. It was. It was just. I was just. I was always just a funny kid in class, but. It was people telling me, you know, as I got older in high school, like, you should get into entertainment. You should. And I was like, what? Mm -hmm. I thought I was because you don't know that these are things about you. I'm being my I'm I'm only being the guy that played video games, watched comic books, watched Star Wars as a kid since I was a right kid. There. Growing up. Yeah. Right, there. right there. That right there. See what you just said right now? Not nothing I mean to cut you off, but right there, those are the makings mm -hmm. of what a hero is, or an entertainer, or a Brandon Brody, or the guy that I just watched on some show. Outshining everybody with his intellect because of the shit that you grew up with, bro. That's in that's 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 education. So like, you know a lot of these rappers, these new rappers, they don't have the education that we had we had growing yeah. up. We had the ciphers, we had the magazines, we had the rap cities, the UMTV raps, we had the dudes that came before us, and we had to watch these people. We had the anticipation from ordering shit, and it took us a couple days, weeks, months to get it, and we finally got it, and it turned us into this. Now everybody just can go on the internet, click, boom, buy the stuff, and it's there. Remember, remember back in the day when I want a Zelda, uh, a Link shield and the and the sword. We could never find that, but now you can go to Hot Topic or just go hit Amazon and somebody uh, can just make it for you. You right? All I'm yeah. saying is, which I like, and I but I also it, dislike it, 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 the exactly. Same time. It's it, exact, and that, that's but what you, I'm saying. We have oh, too you, much. We have way too much information now. We have way too much access mm -hmm. and we're abusing the access and we're not and we're not conveying the information properly and it's all getting misconfirmed. Bro, the 90s and the 80s wasn't that long ago, right? And it's like, how do we have amnesia that we forgot certain stuff when you could just go look it up on the internet? Yeah. Like look up the fact. So now he just said, being that nerdy kid, not even you're not even a nerd, you're just a kid that just stayed the hell out, you stayed out the way. So you played your little games, you watched your little sci-fi shit, you watched, you read your magazines, you like certain things. Then you grew up and became an adult. That same information, that same knowledge, those kids, those same kids that grew up to become to become the Kevin Feige's and the Seth MacFarlane's and the and the Seth Greens and the da 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 that created all these shows and these platforms was Brandon Brody. That's Yo, that's 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 chilling, man. Because I literally <laughs> like remember going through a time period. I mean, hell, like I, I I have all these Star Wars like figures and shit. You know what I mean? I have the whole like all the whole stuff, and I remember. When I was uh, when I was younger, it was Black Panther. But like I had like all all, all these figurines. I, I, they called mm -hmm. them the what the five 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 and a half inch uh, Star Wars the figures. Like yeah, these were the, the four scale. They were the, uh, they're called the Power of the Force, and like they weren't the original original joints that dropped in the seventies were like very rigid, very stiff. Yeah, these were stiff, a little more rubber, rubbery. Yeah, mm -hmm. these were made by Kenner Toys, Kenner, and they yeah. were like very um they were just a good a good. A wave and I used to I used to set these motherfuckers up, man. I used to have them right. all set up with it. And I remember my friends coming over and you know these they clearly weren't into Star Wars, you know, didn't know what it was all about. And they and they just thought it was kind of fucking funny that I had all these figurines set up, you know. And I and of course for me, now I'm like still trying to be cool, like, oh yeah, I mean those are just my toys. And I remember taking them all down and putting them in bins and shit, you know what I mean? Because I because I was embarrassed of them, and I also didn't want them touching my my toys like i was already like just very like particular about people touching my things but like i literally just didn't want because i mean you knock one of them niggas over the whole guy yeah, damn, everything now, coming down whole galaxy tips over you know because i like to just like set them up you know what i mean and um and even in like gaming it was cool because when you meet other people you start to find out okay you pretty pretty universally like other boys pretty much like video games so you you, mm -hmm. you kind of get along with that the the video games you played that's like you know of course some kids some kids you'd get together you'd play the fighting games you'd play the uh, the racing games but it's like you'd have to find them. the real real gamers were the ones they were they were playing that Zelda they were playing those 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 mm -hmm. those games that seemed uncool to play or whatever right. but Star Wars yeah. for sure was one of those things that by the time I guess so 1999 is when the prequel no no excuse me not even the prequels no it was when I was like 10 or 11 is when the the, the special edition trilogy came out that then I started seeing a, a, a new surge of mm -hmm. people getting into Star Wars. Because I was watching the, 
the original yeah. OG tapes, man. Video to VHS. That that VHS is, man. <laughs> I didn't yeah. know so funny. You know, so the crazy. box that was so dope. The VHS is too. Bro. Yes, it was gold with the with the yeah. Yeah. Right, bro. It was three. It but, was a trilogy. Oh, I, I wanted to bring up a point too, though, because I talk about thinking about a crossroad, right? So you think about the crossroad between a hero and a villain, and it's kind of exactly what you guys were saying. I do believe it's the people that you tell about your superpowers as a super, right? Because you got to think about it this way, right? Everybody has that one person that is the moral compass that is in their life that helps train them right once you get your powers right so like either you have nobody that's going to check you and you go down personal gain personal gain and then you end up becoming a villain because you want maximal personal gain or you are trying to be a hero just like spider-man seeking out he was seeking out fights you know you got to say kick ass was seeking out fights but then they have that one person who sees the path and is like yo with great responsibility you know, with great powers come great responsibility you know you gotta you, you have to be the hero that's you know superman even when he came down that story's been told multiple times if he didn't if uncle um um if he didn't land in kansas and they didn't find him and you know what i'm saying and raise him what type of person would superman be so he'd i do be bright, believe he'd be bright burn he'll be bright burn. so i think when you the crossroad also because like i feel like 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 you said it's in you you want you mm -hmm. you just being you you either you get the power or whatever that's already in you, embedded in you, based off of your characteristic traits of everything, right? Mm -hmm. But then you have to make a decision. Am I going to be a hero or am I going to be a villain with these powers? And that is based around, again, your, your, your same scenario. You know, Brody yeah. had people telling him, you funny, you funny, you funny, going to entertainment. Me, when my pops figured out that I like doing music and everything like that, him and my mom pushed me to do more using your voice in music. So it's like, it's mm -hmm. all based off of the people that you know what I'm saying that you see inspiration or the people that you trust in their 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 uh their moral compass to tell you like hey you should continue down this path because now that becomes your beacon you know anytime spider-man's losing his way he remembers what uncle ben says you know what I'm saying like anytime like it's just like it becomes your beacon based off of that versus if you don't have a beacon you don't have that one person then it's just like ain't nobody ever told me anything different so I'm just doing this for me you know, so that's the why I think. So, okay, so so then that also leads then kind of into my next question: Is being a hero being a misguided villain? And so, for example, we take the thing of like heroes who don't kill. So, let's say, for instance, like Batman. Mm -hmm. Batman does not kill his villains. They go to Arkham. They break out. They kill more people. Would that not be adding to the problem and saying that you're also a villain because of the fact that you're playing this cat and mouse game with people who can't survive? Same thing yeah, with Spider Man, in a, in a way, now, yeah. So now, but now, then also, too, though, like you know, just to be fair, there is that other side, for instance, like a Sonic or um, like a uh, Sonic or like a Mario who have a different purpose in trying to stop somebody. Like Sonic was fighting for survival. He's trying to fight from Dr. Robotnik taking over his entire planet and yeah. capturing everybody. So it it's more, so it's like, I know that there's different levels to it, but even into that sense, it's just like, in him not fully stopping him, him not taking care of the problem, you're still allowing this to where someone is going to have to pay for this because of your percep uh, your perception. So does that really make you a hero or a well, blinded villain? I, I think it, it it goes based off of how much you believe in the law because the so because the issue with a hero killing is the villain hasn't been tried right so if you because like because you people are okay with if you've been tried and then you get you know what I'm saying you get the death penalty now again there's also still people who don't believe in the death penalty right so it, it comes down to and, and I'm, I'm only using that sense not the sonic sense but like the kill or not kill it goes based off of pretty much where do you land out on capital punishment? Do you believe in the death penalty and everything? Because if so, then you'd be like, okay, if there's an obvious villain that's taking over the world, then you may be a little bit more sympathetic. Like, you know what? We don't need a trial. Because there's been multiple times that we've seen in the news of shit that happened. You're like, fam, why is this going to trial? Just get rid of this nigga. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it comes down to that. And, um, and I guess where you land on it, because then, because then, if you are a person who doesn't believe in 
capital punishment or you don't believe in the death penalty, then what Batman is doing is not a cat and mouse game. You're like, okay, yes, that's right. They need to be they need to be captured and they need to be facilitated. You know what I'm saying? And that's what they're okay with and everything like that. So I guess it just falls on there. Now, Deuces, if Deuces was in Gotham, I, I'm looking at Batman like, bro, why ain't you killing? Because <laughs> well, it, it keeps Deuces in keeps Gotham is going to be like, nah, niggas got to go. <laughs> Bat, it keeps Batman employed, bro. It does, <laughs> but I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, so that, and, and is that, so that's what I'm asking. Is that not true villainy? Like how I said, like, Batman it is. is Batman captures these people, put them in a prison in which he owns, makes them even more crazier, and then lets them get out and then does the shit again. All right, so then is he getting paid per processing fee? <laughs> he owns Arkham. That's why I'm like, yo, that is insane to me. <laughs> I know it is crazy. It is insane. You cannot tell me Batman is not a villain. But is he is he is he getting financial gain from it right and, now? And, all and, his and, money come from Wayne Tech. I don't think he's getting really a lot of money. He is getting financial hey. gain because you got to understand the DA's offices. You know what I mean? Yeah. They they have a, okay. they have a, a, a reason. The money the money keeps circulating, so it's like yeah. you know you gotta when you process. Have these, we heard these, taxes you know, going up in Gotham? Because if look, taxes bro, going up no, in you Gotham, yeah, think about it. The thing. bigger the bigger the no. prison, the more the city is putting money into. <laughs> Like that's why, like LA puts half of their resources into the LAPD. Listen, that's why their buildings look so nice. But he's a I'll you know, do one better for you. Know, I'll do one better. You know, Bruce is a shareholder at Bell Reeve. At Bell Reeve, dog. Yeah. Yo, <laughs> what you, you going to say, Brody? And to check this. Think about it like this too. So the cops report back to to every, their their, their uh, precincts and everything. They're like, yeah, we got him. We got him. And then because. Gotham knows, oh shit, there's a threat. There's this guy, there's this new guy. Blah, 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 blah. Not all of them know that Batman is the one that did it. And Batman's not going on the news. They're not even going on the news all the time saying Batman did this. What they know is that, okay, the streets are safer because of our police force. They know pump more money into the, <laughs> into the Gotham PD. Yeah. You know what's even crazier? And this is like it's a Batman's my favorite hero, but like I said, I'm not blind to his flaws. The, the biggest flaw about Batman is, bro, you have all the... like Batman clearly doesn't give a fuck about money. If he was just to pump all the money back into Gotham, he'll fix the crime. If he give better jobs, fixing up the streets, fixing up the buildings, like... Because Batman clearly doesn't care about the money. So just... If he but, if he just gave it all to the government and said let's just fix everything, let's get everybody employed, nobody's losing their job, the schools are better, crime or is even, going down. Or Batman's even, a weirdo, bro. If I'm being honest, Batman man. is a Batman is a hardcore. He's a weirdo, man. man. Anyone that says that's their favorite superhero, I'll be like, yo, Batman's a weirdo, bro. Because <laughs> <laughs> think, think about it, he could give his resources to the GCPD. They could all be running around in bat suits, but no. Explain Robin, dog. I didn't, yo, like, no, no, I, wait, no, wait, wait, which one, which one, which one? Uh, all of them, uh, all of them. Dick Grayson, have, explain there Dick Grayson. Ain't, there ain't a successful Robin oh. that then came out that house. What you that's mean? Gonna be, that's going to lead a normal life? He fucked all them boys' heads up. He fucked all their heads up. Nah, I think Dick is cool. What? Now, Gray, you Gray, think, yo, yeah, say Gray, that sound bite for He, he <laughs> had... <laughs> That does not work in the context of anything else. That's but why, this hey, this is why I never call. This is why I never call him by his first name. I just, Grayson. <laughs> just Grayson, bro. Yeah, Change his no. name. Retcon his name, man. Bro, he had Damn. he he had he had to say, "Hey, Batman, fuck you," and then do a whole excursion in Bloodhaven before he got cool. Like <laughs> before he finally got level headed, <laughs> he did an he did an excursion while exploring on an expedition. Ford. Sponsor me. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, no, yeah, Batman is def Batman is you definitely said I'm landing on dick with this one. No. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. You may get yourself a different sponsor. You wouldn't. Yeah, I think I think, you, I think you I think you have your promo right there, Will. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, okay. So if we're talking about the crossroads, then we got to talk about one of the greatest character arcs that we've seen on TV from hero okay. uh, from villain to hero, which is that nigga Vegeta. Vegeta. He 
because he had serious Stockholm syndrome because he immediately like he saw Frieza enslave and kill his planet, and then he said, "You know what? All right, you already you got me working for you." And then he bought into all that villainy, and then it took him to find love between some 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 light uh, some light skinned blue haired chicks cheeks, and then he changed everything about him once he got them cheeks. He was Here's like, the, yo, now but, I'm the protector of the planet. Hey, wait, wait. Sidebar, can I, can, I, can I, before you go, uh, Will, for sidebar, can we talk about how fly uh, Prince Vegeta was in the Broly film? Like, he's oh, yeah. so crazy. I'm just, I'm just talking about him just, just, be, just beating up Broly, like, like, yeah, I got you. Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan, God. Was, oh, oh, God. Vegeta, that nigga, huh? Yeah, he was. He was fighting. But, but, but here's my thing. I don't know if I can make Vegeta a hero or even uh it's like a he's anti bro but no, he's a hero now it's bro nah, nah, man no, 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 hero, no, hold on cool. it's, no no it's, no it's no. it's he hold on hold on hold on it's hero by default no it's because not think, no yes that it is think about it. super no that no 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 all in super how because <laughs> Bro, in Super, when once 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 it was the universal battle in Super, right? So, you know what I'm saying? They they protecting the planet and everything like that, right? But the one thing that pissed them off, that pushed them to the um Super Saiyan true blue is when he heard that nigga top me, say that I gave away everything to get this power. And what Vegeta say in that speech? He said, You gave away everything? Nigga, I don't give away family, I don't give away my loved ones, and he became that is not an anti-villain speech. That became a hero. He said that with his chest. He became true blue, and he beat that nigga top ass. That's Fuck because he. Nigga. That's because he didn't like top. No, nah, no, nah, he didn't like what he was Vegeta, saying. Bro, Go watch Vegeta, it, bro, I love that Vegeta, scene. Go watch it again. Vegeta is the most. No, Vegeta got to be the best selfish person that landed into a hero out this whole list. This man ain't never ran up to save a planet. When he fought Cell, he wanted to fight Cell because he said he was the strongest. Yeah. When he when he wanted to fight the androids, it's because they said they were stronger. Yep. Yep. It had nothing to do with Earth. He was even talking. when he even when he fought Boo, he was like, "You blow this motherfucker up. I don't true. care. Yep. Like we going somewhere to fight." But and all that is true. But and that's all Z. But soon, once Super came, once Super, look at look at bro. He was scared shitless of the God of Destruction. But as soon as, as, soon as he put had, laid a finger on Boma, what'd he say? Not my, Not my Boma! Boma. Hey, hey, yes, but, a, okay, hey. okay so, then that, so then let me ask you this then. You don't see a villain that way? You don't think the Joker would smack the shit out of somebody if they did that to his woman? No! To Harley? Bro, Joker threw Harley out of a fucking helicopter. Joker, Joker shot Common in the face for just giving her a compliment. Fun yeah. fact, he fun fact, he dies in, in the air cut. He died in the air cut, and then they brought yes, him back. He to yes, he did. Yes, he did. Bro, that was, Joker that was has shown cut that scene out. Joker yeah. has shown many, many times in comic book animation. Yeah. And it, like, yeah, he picked like there's but, there may there may be some times where he does it, but for the most part, he don't give a fuck about Harley. But my but my point to that is though, like uh he it doesn't make you a hero doing that. Like even a bad guy would slap the shit out of somebody that hit their wife. But, but that I don't said, make you a hero. But there was more. Joker than that. is like Blueface and Krishan, man. That relationship is yo, the same thing. Yeah, yo, bro. Yeah. I just I just realized that that shit is Joker and Harley Quinn, man. It is. And if you look at Jared Leto's uh, version of it, it's like yo, that that's Blueface without. The I'm gonna name. start. I'm gonna start saying that on the internet, man. Yeah. Bro, yeah. ever since, but it, ever since Dragon Ball Super drop. Vegeta has been front line coming to the fight to protect the world to every threat in Super. When, ha and when has he said that? When has he said that? Though? Bro, when, when 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 Broly came, Goku and Vegeta showed up and said, "Wait, who is this nigga, bro? Hold on." Like, you know what I'm saying? When when uh when Resurrection that F came and Frieza came back, Vegeta popped up and said, "Nah, fam, what you want? Like, you know, we ain't doing this." And in when okay. in, in when Hit came and like, bro, there like there was there's only been four, no, there's been five big bads. When Goku okay. Black and, came, and they was like, "Yo, nah, we on your heels, bro." Since Super Vegeta has been a hero in Dragon Ball Super. Okay, so then here's my other side to that coin with that. The four you just named also still come from a selfish impulse. Broly is legendary Super Saiyan. Why would Vegeta not go check that out and want to fight? That has nothing to do with being a hero. Which, I want a box. Which, Freezer. Huh? Which Broly, though? We, he's talking about Super. We don't oh, talk about Super. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So this is so again, you got to remember, Vegeta think it's only him and these few that's left. 
So I want to go check that out myself. That has nothing to do with being a hero. Mm -hmm. Number two, uh, who did you say? Uh, uh, Frieza. You already have a personal beef with Frieza. Mm -hmm. If I get a chance to, if I'm stronger than you and I get a chance to kill, because think about it. He never got to kill Frieza. Frieza killed him. And he yeah. never got and he never got to kill him. So I'm gonna keep coming back for that. Has nothing to do with being a hero. The only one you can really a Goku Black, same thing with the whole uh Saiyan thing. And it's just like, oh, then you gonna mix them two together? You ain't gonna use me as the ultimate version? Oh no, nah, I'm gonna show y'all why. Has but he ain't say none of that though. You can't put that on you, the jacket. Yes, yes, you can. Yes, you can because you know that's the Saiyan mentality. He's always shown that. And Goku shows it too because sometimes Goku don't really be coming for that. He be just like, yo, I want to fight and see who's the strongest. But he's had it more times to where I won't let you destroy my world. So that's why he shows that he's here. Yeah, Vegeta ain't never said no shit like that. Vegeta has always been about him and it happens to stumble on that. Oh yeah, it, it also, I saved the world by killing this dude. Nah, I ain't giving that. No, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm just again. That's just, I'm just giving. But, but he is broody though. But you know, you gotta understand. Like he's a broody dude. Because even think about it. If, you know, com in comparison to Clark and Bruce, you know, Vegeta and Goku. Like Bruce is never gonna admit shit, even though he like he he cares about all of them and stuff like that. He's not gonna admit that he cares about the Justice League or any of his his comrades and shit like that. Vegeta is gonna be the same way. He's like. Ugh. I'm not. I'm not doing any of that stuff. Ugh. Like I'm not. I'm not doing that. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not agreeing to saving this planet. But I want to save this planet because he has a purpose now. Before I, he didn't know, have a purpose. I, I, can, I can see that. I can. He didn't have. I he didn't have being yeah. He, he didn't yeah. have a purpose. He got kids and a wife, and he has a, a a new world that he lives on. His old world is gone. So even if Earth is destroyed, where the fuck is Vegeta gonna go? You know what I'm saying? Like where are you yeah. gonna go? Like That's where, true. where? Yeah. That's true. I can say I get you know you can see it that way. I, I would say you know what I would say the debate even in those would be which one is his priority, and I would say the selfishness is always going to be for my my defense that the selfishness was priority one. And then I, I guess if, if this was still Dragon Ball, Ball Z, I would mm -hmm. I would agree. Since Super, I think it is the family yeah, and the yeah, love. You world. feel like it, you nah, feel like nah. it kind of like shifted a little yeah. bit. Like, no, nah, Deuces has a point though. He does have a point, but also Vegeta is also that kid. He, that got all the cool stuff, but don't want nobody touching this shit. True. <laughs> like that's also that's who that's what Jesus. Yeah. You know, yeah, 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 the way he, the way he <laughs> acted when he saw Trunks turn Super Saiyan, hey, he was like, not, so everybody Super Saiyan, huh? <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he did that with Boomer too. Hey, I got a new toy and and the old one that I had it can't touch. <laughs> that's why you saw Yamcha like. <laughs> hey, that was the craziest thing when I saw that transition. I'm like, wait, so he took his girl, bro? No, they, they, they never gave no. they, they never gave us the lead up. Yeah, you saw no, them, they, you saw them straight, land, and then the next time you saw them, they was together. You like, wait, right. what the fuck? That's right. yo, hey, on the real, before we wrap this up. That's what need to be made a mockumentary. Yeah. The Yamcha story, how he <laughs> fell from grace. That yo, summer. Listen, well, that, what happened that summer? That yo, summer was bro. Horrible. He grew his hair out and everything. <laughs> that you know, was the worst like, summer. Yo, I'm about to life. bag him this summer, boy. When when they see my hair like long like this at the at the fight at the championship Ultimate Fighters, bro. Bro, from being yeah. from from being what bait like Kid Goku's nemesis as far as like power and training. To the fall off to like a failed baseball career, like bro, right. that's a whole mockumentary in itself. Like, hey, Yamcha, yo. honestly, he's the origin story of a real villain, bro. Oh, especially if you think about in in Dragon Ball Super, Yamcha just he knew he was like Goku gonna come get me. I just gotta get ready. And Goku was at Goku was literally like, "Hey, yo, Yamcha, you uh." You heard about Frieza? Is, is, is Frieza's in hell, right? I can resurrect him. Y'all, I'm just like, oh, I know he's going to get me. He's like, uh, hey, boo, I know you've been sleeping. You think you can get back? He's like, yo, yo, I'm right here, man. Hey, I'm right here. He's like, hey, uh, Woshi, I know you old as shit, but you can still fight, right? Y'all, I'm just like, bro. <laughs> like, he just did not Because why would you? Why would you? Like, yo, like, if, if he's just like, yo, Goku, what's up? Be like, hey, bro, look. <laughs> I watch somebody take your bitch from you. I'd rather take. I'd rather take future trunks. Hey, trunks, can you grow up a little bit more and then come back in time? What my son with one arm? I bet you he'll be okay. Put it back. Ain't no, ain't no, ain't no wolf fang fist around here, bro. Right. <laughs> but, then, but then too, it was like, yo, Yamcha, I gave you your chance. Remember, I was like, okay, we are gonna bring you back for another season. 
Hey, you gonna go against the androids? What happened? You let that old nigga grab you by the mouth and punch you through your stomach. Like, what you want me to do? That and that was five minutes until them just getting there. Bro, his death is so epic that it's mirrored in like a multitude of other animes. Mm -hmm. Just that yeah. him laying oh, in that crater. Oh, oh, the Cybermen thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, I'm just like, I just, I need a mockumentary of just like, where is young shit at At some point, they're going to be like, bro, just go up there with Yajirobe, fam. Just just chill with Corin and Yajirobe. Be, make sure we got sensu beans on deck. Like, bro, just it's like, no but it, it's, it's like the one that don't want to leave. Like, y'all, like what it is, y'all, Jerobe, he left. He was like, hey, I'm good, bro. Like, like, he I'm, sell, he, like he's slanging them beans. Well, y'all, yeah, Jerobe, y'all getting that money, dog. He, he like, said, I'm hey. done. I'm done. She ended was even like, hey, look, listen. I did my shit. I'm going back to the to the monastery and be. I'm about to start like, my dojo. He just started a whole dojo. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm I'm going back over here. Y'all got that whole world saving stuff. Y'all good. Yamcha though just couldn't let it go. It was like, all right, I'm ready. I'm ready, boy, man. Any anytime that phone gonna ring, man. Let me call. Let me call Chi Chi real quick and see if we good. Uh, hey, oh, pick shit. it up. Oh, hey, let hold me on, make sure it's on. The line disconnected. Hold on. Let me let me call King Yama real quick, man. You know me and King Yama go back. I'm like, oh, it's disconnected. Let me try to bitch on the little gold ball. Like, well, I don't even know what number to dial for that. Uh, <laughs> and I still owe Master Roshi eighty three dollars, so I can't call him. I can't call him. Can't call can't him. Call him man. <laughs> but yo, man, I think it's been a good episode. Um, actually, you know, too, I want to start changing stuff up just by thinking of these two topics, man. I think this is a new thing I'm gonna add to the show, just kind of breaking down the psychology of heroes and the evolution of villains. I think we did kind of like, uh, really like get a good focus on Batman and Vegeta as far as being uh heroes, and you know, uh, potentially the the side of could it be blindsided villainy but i think this is a good topic for us to start being able to talk on about here especially just the way y'all were able to really jump into it so i really appreciate that from each and every one of y'all so before we get out of here though i always want to make sure that y'all get a chance to support one and uh tell people where to come and support y'all so we're gonna start with deuces we're gonna move over to ato go to brody and then we're gonna close this thing on out deuces you are up first Yo, 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 man, you know, follow me, young underscore deuces everywhere. Make sure you go to geeksetpodcast.com. Check out a lot of the things that we're doing over there. Um, we are gearing up for DreamCon. So if you are going to be in DreamCon, it's going to be in Austin, Texas at the end of July. Man, make sure you uh, come chop it up with us. We're going to have our cameras out there. We're still filming for the Black Geek documentary. And we actually may be doing some dope stuff there during that time. So we can't announce it yet, but if, you're, uh, if you are in the building, just make sure you go check out wherever Geek Set's going to be. Yes, sir. All right, man. Um, shit, just follow me. ATO worldwide. Um, there's some things going on. I just can't talk about anything anymore because <laughs> them NDAs. Them NDAs. <laughs> huh? NDAs. Yes, NDAs. For on, for on. Nah, um, just follow me, man. ATO worldwide. I got some pretty popping content, man. And um, it's always a pleasure to uh join up with these brothers right here, man. I've I've built some pretty super dope rapports with all of them. Um, man, it's just great to be around this type of company, man. And uh, shout out to all of y'all, man. Straight up. Yes, sir. Oh, one more thing. And Brody, man, I'm proud of you, bro. You're smart. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it, bro. You're smart, bro. <laughs> You're smart, dude. G for real. Smart, you smart, man. Smart, man. Yeah, man. Um, uh, let's see. You can find me on all social media platforms at Brody the Joker at uh B R O A D Y the Joker. Um, if you're in the DMV, or if you're not in the DMV, I'm doing a live taping June 18th. It's Father's Day. It's Juneteenth weekend. That Sunday. There's no work. There's no school the next day. Um, I'm recording my live taping at the Arlington Draft House. So get your tickets right now, ArlingtonDraftHouse.com. And uh, ATO is referring to. I just I just was uh, on a game show, another game show. So this is the second game show I've done, and I I, I did pretty, pretty pretty well. So uh, go check it out. It's called Split Second. So if you have Game Show Network app or whatever you can you find in. I think my episode's called Rock and Roll or some, something like that. But uh, yeah, just aired this Tuesday. Very grateful. And uh, other than that, man, tap in with me. Yes, sir. 
Yes, sir. And hey, y'all already know me as Will Farrow. You can find me uh, everywhere as Will Farrow, P H A R A O H. Um, just make sure you like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And then uh, comment below on who do you want to see us break down the psychology of heroes and the evolution of a villain in the comments below. Uh, make sure you keep checking out all the Elevate, all the uh, women, and all the gaming and the RK tokens as well. Uh, thank y'all for checking out this episode, and we will catch you next time. Peace. Peace.